someone who is working in this field, just to give you some idea and put things into perspective about where we are as far as um, COVID is concerned. Now, let me just say right at the beginning, there are many things that we don't know so far. So there are things that we do know, but it's important that we acknowledge that things are happening very fast. So what I say now may be a little outdated by tonight. And as we get more and more information, we will make it known and make sure it gets channeled and, and publicized in the right way so that you can distinguish and discern between what is true science and what is fake news. Okay? So the first thing that's important is that you do not have to be, um, be skeptical about what's going on now. It is a known fact scientifically that in order for viruses to survive, they have to mutate. So viruses mutate to live and they live to mutate. And it was just a matter of time until, until this happened. And that's why science, scientists could predict it. And we do know, too, that new waves are driven by the following. Number one, behavior change. Now, as soon as the, the numbers declined after the last wave that we had, what happened? Restrictions were lifted, and everyone thought that COVID is over, and so, um, you know, we allowed more people to come to church, gatherings, everyone started to return to work, and fewer, much less wearing of masks, much less hand sanitizing, and so the first driver of a new wave is always behavior change. The second one is new variants. As I mentioned now, viruses love to mutate and they mutate to live. And then thirdly, the unvaccinated drive the pandemic. Because that's the way a wave starts. It needs a variant and the variant needs to infect someone who's unvaccinated and usually with a weak immune system. And this is what we suspect how this cluster broke out. And so the fourth wave has literally arrived just on time as the science predicted. Some were brave enough to give dates, but it is here, and, and that's where we are now. And so this new variant B11521, now called Omicron, which is the 15th letter of the Greek alphabet, is here and will be here for the next few months. Again, what we know so far that this variant is spreading rapidly in South Africa, in particular in Gauteng. Gauteng seems again to be the epicenter of the pandemic. You know, it's <clears throat> the new, it appears to be outcompeting other variants, even Delta. And that is scary. I'll show you the graph of that now. And the reason for this is this new variant has at least and many more mutations than other variants, at least. 32 mutations on the spike protein. The good news uh, up to now is that there are no unusual symptoms that are reported. However, as I mentioned, it is still early days. And this is, you can see, the blue line, the blue graph there represents the Delta variant. The other green or light blue and red is uh, the last two waves, the Alpha and the Beta strain. But look at this black line here compared to Delta, it's already on a steep upward trajectory. And that does not augur well for the next few months with regard to this new variant. So that's what we know. There are certain things that we are not too sure of yet. And that's why I emphasize yet. We may know it later on tonight, tomorrow, next week. Right? Is this new variant more transmissible than Delta? We knew that Delta had an RR number of between 5 and 8. In other words, one person could potentially infect between 5 and 8 people. We don't know is this one, if this one, whether this one will be worse or more transmissible. We don't know whether it's going to cause more severe disease. Are more people going to land up in hospital because of this? And also, will this new mutation render our vaccines less effective? for those of us who have been vaccinated. And these are the things that are, we don't know yet, and yet many, many countries just made a rash decision, a harsh decision to isolate and cut off South Africa from the rest of the world. But what I have seen so far, having just a few patients, four cases, three are fully vaccinated, one unvaccinated. 
please don't be alarmed by that because remember your vaccine protects you against severe illness, hospitalization, and death. You can still get COVID with the vaccine called a breakthrough infection. That is not a problem. Does not make the vaccine a bad vaccine. Of those four cases and of the three who are fully vaccinated, two were, have been vaccinated with Pfizer and one with, uh, with, with J&J. &J. And the good news is that so far all have mild illnesses. And this is verified by a number of, of, of doctors who have started already seeing this new variant. This is what my one patient, uh, in terms of feedback, you know, I talk to my patient first thing in the morning. Uh, the one, he's a healthcare worker, having been uh, vaccinated with J&J. &J. Hi, doc, I'm doing well, thanks. No problems as yet. Just a headache here and there, taking paracetamol. Mild illness. This gentleman at 5 o'clock this morning, he's on day three, fully vaccinated with Pfizer, second jab, just now in August. Feeling much better already, no headache, no fever. There you go. Complete faith in the vaccine okay? and, in the, and in God. So where to from here? What is my message to us as a church, to those who are watching, and to the greater community out there? My first message is to those who are hesitant about taking the vaccine. You've been thinking about it. You've been sitting on the fence. My message is, as soon as I am done here, get out and go and get vaccinated. Pray that you can get J&J, &J because then at least you'll be fully vaccinated within the next 14 days. If you get Pfizer, it's going to take 56 days. And stay home. If you belong to the category of those who are anti-vaccine, and I'm going to say this very, very kindly, I'm going to say it with the utmost compassion of 30 years of being a doctor. Number one, stay home. Put yourself under lockdown level five. Please do not put the lives of others who have taken the time to be vaccinated at risk. Put aside any ignorance that you may have, any arrogance about vaccines, about science and misinformation, including misinterpreting scripture. Put that aside and do the right thing and get vaccinated ASAP. And if you don't want to do it for yourself, at least do it for others. For those of us who are vaccinated, please don't panic. No, there is no indication yet that the vaccine is ineffective. The vaccine will still do the job of protecting you against serious illness, hospitalization, and dying from COVID. Okay. And then just another message um, that has come out in the last few days. Government from the 1st of December will now be offering a, an, a, what you call an additional dose. It's not a booster dose, an additional dose. So for those who have no spleen, for instance, for those who have uh, um, Shane's mum and uh, Toys, for instance, who have certain illnesses where they're on high-dose steroids and immunosuppressant drugs, um, if you have a hematological malignancy, Rob, you should be telling your dad with multiple myeloma, any of those conditions, you require an additional dose. So that will be a third Pfizer or a second J&J, not a booster, an additional dose to boost your immune system against the vein. And that will become standard going forward, which will be at least 28 days after your second Pfizer or 28 days after your first J&J. So watch the news for that. If you need more information, please, because you have to see a doctor. There's a form that needs to be filled out. We write a prescription and you get and you get, uh, can go and get the vaccine. What to do now? Remember, it's all about getting back to basics. Some of the things that we've forgotten because we thought Delta was, was over, or COVID was over. The Vs, vaccinate, be vigilant, and ventilate. Keep windows open. You have seen some signboards that also say, it's your choice, vaccination or ventilation. That ventilation is the one where you are in hospital on a ventilator. Right? Back to basics. Wear your mask at all times. Please make sure it is an N95 number one or a KN95 number two second choice or a KN94 or a medical or surgical mask. Please do not wear cloth masks or scarves around your neck. Omicron will get through that. All right? Wash and sanitize your hands. Watch your distance. 
windows open, and please watch the signs and not fake news. And then lastly, what to expect? We don't know. We're we having a family meeting tonight. Are there going to be more restrictions, particularly restrictions on gatherings? Maybe even restrictions on interprovincial travel. We have been planning, God willing, to, to visit Elaine in December, but now I'll be spending my time downloading this song and singing, I'll be home for Christmas. <laughs>